process was a separate bone in lower animals and ostrigonum of calcaneum. There is a posterior tubercle in the calcaneum, we call it ostrigonum. Aberrant epiphysis, they do appear aberrantly. Usually where you are not expecting epiphysis and you are having it, that is aberrant epiphysis. Head of first metacarpal, head of first metacarpal, look at this, base is a normal epiphysis and head will be considered as aberrant. But for rest of the metacarpals, head is a normal epiphysis, but base will be considered as aberrant epiphysis. So, this is something about the epiphysis, the diaphysis, metaphysis. Growth plate, I already told you what is the growth plate here? Growth plate is the epiphysal plate which is made up of hyaline cartilage. Your ossification and proliferation is vasculogenesis. All these things are uh, taking place in this region. This is the region for the bone growth. Okay, one more thing which I would like to discuss on this diagram only and that is about the covering of the bone which is periosteum. Now, let us just see what is periosteum and how it is present. You can do it in the same diagram if you want, you do not have to draw it separately. I am just running out of the space, that is why I am drawing it again. Now guys, this, the covering which is on the brain, this fibrous layer is called as periosteum. This is periosteum. You may have heard of two, two words, one is periosteum and endosteum. If it is covering it from the inside, let us say the skull bone is covered from inside with the fibrous layer, we call it endosteum and if it is on the outer surface, we call it periosteum. What is periosteum? Now, periosteum is a fibrous layer which is adherent to the underlying bone by these collagen fibers which are called as Sharpe's fiber. These are called as Sharpe's fiber. Guys, Sharpe's fiber are nothing, they are the projection of collagen fibers from the surface of the bones. These spike like projections are attaching the periosteum to the bone. Now, periosteum, one special thing about periosteum is you will not see periosteum on the articular surface. The articular surface of a bone is covered with a hyaline cartilage. So, if this is a hyaline cartilage over here, you will not see periosteum covering the hyaline cartilage or the articular surface. So, what will it do? The periosteum in this part, close to the articular part, it goes and merges with the capsule of the joint. So, if, if I imagine, if this is the capsule of the joint over here, if this is the capsule of the joint, your periosteum is merging with the capsule of the joint. Periosteum is very richly supplied with the nerves and blood vessel. It is very richly supplied with we have nerves and lot of blood vessels. It is richly supplied by the uh, blood, uh, nerves and the blood vessel. Now, look at this. Periosteum is richly supplied by the blood vessels. And the same blood vessels are also responsible for supplying the outer part of the cortex. Guys, if this is the cortex over here and you are looking at the medullary cavity inside, this is the cortex. A part of a cortex, part of a cortex, this is cortex, is supplied by the blood vessels of the periosteum. And periosteum is not present on the articular surfaces. Periosteum is continuing with the capsule. That is why fractures like fractured neck of the femur. Now, as you know, this is if this is femur over here. If this is femur over here, and this is how we have the capsule of the hip joint. And the periosteum, which is present on the surface of the femur, 
will continue with the capsule and is not present around the neck of femur and that is the reason that is the reason why fracture neck femur they have 